Hi, hey everybody. Will here with this week's interview chair. This week, we're starting a Breeder Showcase. I'm starting with my very good friends, Pat Blanke and Brian Casey from Wrath Liberator Dobermans. They've been a staple in my life, my entire dog show life. So sit back and enjoy Pat and Brian. Hi, everybody. Today on the interview chair, I have Pat Blenke and Brian Casey, Wrath Liberator Dorbmans. I've known them my entire dog life. So as soon as I started in dogs, I knew Pat and Brian. So Brian was actually one of our very first handlers. He showed one of our, one of my parents' dogs, and they've dominated Dorbmans, especially in our area, since I was a kid. Hi, guys. How are you? Uh, pretty good, good. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you both. Beef <laughs> game last night. <laughs> oh, I did. I couldn't watch it. <laughs> I just had a feeling they weren't going to pull it off. Oh well. <laughs> Pat's like, oh no, they're talking about hockey. <laughs> All right, I want to start again, but since there's two of you, I'm going to start off with Pat. His ladies first. I want Pat to tell her story of when she started in dogs, up until she and Brian get together. And then I'll stop, and we'll start with Brian, and Brian will do the same timeline. He'll go until he meets Pat. Okay, we'll try and okay. remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Pat, tell me how you got started in the sport of dogs. Okay, well, my parents, uh, I grew up with, um, well, I won't say I grew up. We, My parents had um, English cockers and springers. Because she lived in England. Oh, this was, in, of course, in England. But um, I was very small. And, um, of course, during the war years, everything went haywire. So I don't even know uh, any records or whatever that they might or might not have had. So I just say from that, I go fast forward to 1958 when um, John and I, my ex, um, John Blanke, obedience judge, <laughs> Um, I remember John. <laughs> that was first Doberman. Um, it happened because there was a young couple we became friends with, and they had this Doberman called Max, who was an absolute love. And um, from then on, you know, it, it just seemed like there was not going to be any other breed for us. Um, so after that, we decided that we needed a puppy of our own. So we an answered an ad, and I can't remember whether it was a newspaper or um, our dog, because by this time we were getting interested. And we'd done some reading up on Dobermans and so on. Um, anyway, we drove a whole 60 miles to Scarborough, <laughs> which was kind of a day's stretch in those days. And um, we found, we, um, found this um, puppy in a, 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 it was a huge uh, farmhouse kitchen. And all of these puppies were running around. <clears throat> there was one puppy that took our eye. We thought, well, we'll take this one home. But then she threw up. And it was like, oh, wait a minute, new people, you know, new dog owners. We don't want that one. And then we <laughs> was equally nice in our mind. So we took her. She became um, Zanville's Repsha. Repsha, we called her, Red. And um, brought her home. I joined our local kennel club, went to a few matches, and she just took off. She was a flyer. She won everything. We took some, We did some open shows. Um, with, and she did well at those, and that encouraged us to go to our very first championship show, which was Leicester. Uh, Bill Burroughs was judging at the time, and we were very, very, we were newcomers, and there was all these county types, you know, hunt and shoot and fishing, 
kind in their tweed. And we turn up, you know, two mod people. <laughs> and um, anyway, John goes in the, in the ring with Red, <clears throat> kneels down to stack the dog. <clears throat> Bill Burroughs turns around and says to him, get off your knees, laddie, you're not showing a fool. So that was a great start to the, to the class. Things progressed. And he sorted them out and read with it at the end. So we thought, oh, hum, well, it was our first show. We'll see how things go. Then he turned the class around and she won it. And she went on to get reserve CC to take Stormy Rath, who was God of the Year at that time. It was an amazing win. And, um, you know, I, actually, I think I have the dog walking to those, how they write in the dog world thing. I think it said, if I can find it here, if I can read it, um, heaven, where is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know it's here somewhere. My gosh. It said, um, Zandel's rapture is so elegant and full of character. I liked her perfect balance, um, her temperament, Quality head and skull. I would have preferred more bone, perhaps, but she was so sound and smart that I eventually gave her the reserve CC. And that was the start of it. Um, John and I were more interested in obedience at the time, I have to say. <clears throat> you know, confirmation wasn't, um, wasn't, you know, big on our list. But anyway, uh, we lived in a locomotive town and a lot of people were redundant. So at that time, we decided we'd have to make a move. So we had to sell Rabsha and an Afghan hound, and that was heartbreaking. Anyway, we came to Canada in 1963, and uh, we were here all of six weeks when we decided we couldn't stay without a dog anymore. We had rented a house. So <laughs> again, we looked in a newspaper newspaper ad and found this, one, this, uh, this litter that was, um, the mother was a, uh, granddaughter of Alamat Checkmate. We, we recognized the name. <clears throat> we actually paid $50 for her, which was a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she she went on to become um, a vegan trial champion, Rath Stormy Rebel. Um, we named our kennel name after Tavis Stormy Rath. So that's how Rath came about. And she um, set a whole new standard for, for obedience. Dobermans at the time. Um, Dobermans weren't popular then. Their reputation wasn't that great. Um, but she was a fantastic obedience worker, superb temperament, um, very dedicated to what job she would give us. Amazing work, work ethic. <clears throat> so we decided to breed her. And uh, we chose um, Bramley's Argonaut, who we went back to some of the Chocolat breeding. From that, we, we got uh, a bitch that we kept, um, <clears throat> and she went on to become, um, she finished her championship and went on to become uh, a Venus Strong champion. And those two bitches, the six consecutive years, um, were top Ontario obedience dogs, six consecutive years. That was quite a record. Oh, <laughs> sure. But John and I didn't, we, we were mostly involved in obedience. And so we didn't do a lot of uh, showing, just at the occasional shows. I think between it, I think during the time we were together, I think we only had five litters, which wasn't a lot. Um, but we mostly devoted to uh, to obedience. And uh, what <clears throat> we bred to um, Jock Lines Blackberry Brandy. That that was one of Joey. That's how we we, we came to know Joey. That was, I think, in 1966. And that's Joey Purdy, just for people that don't know. That's Joey Purdy from Shoffline. Yeah. And um, we had some nice dogs that we kept from that. And then we bred to um, Shoffline's Vintager, Uber. And uh, <clears throat> that's really basically how it started. You know, with the, you know, we weren't terribly involved in, in showing at that time um, obedience was our main uh, focus, you know. But um, but we you know as I say we had some pretty nice puppies that ended up with an impact on or obedience on them I should say and they did very well in them you know and I think that's up until the time. How did you meet the guy next to you? 
<laughs> well, it's a long story. Do you want to tell that story? <laughs> well, I might have screwed that one up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I met Pat through Doberman, obviously. A uh, good friend of mine. He used to come to the house all the time, and he uh, had a, a real nice black male Doberman that he bought from Pat, and I kind of really fell in love with the dog. He was lovely, you know, and uh, well, I thought at the time anyway. So I said, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have one of these. I'd love a, love one of this, these breeds uh, in the house. So anyway, there was a little ad in the paper. I went, had a look at it, very close, Scotland, Ontario, from Brantford. Uh, we had a litter, I don't know, five or six puppies, maybe more. And the mother was a shop line bitch. Really, really nice. You know, t- nice temperament and everything like that. So I ended up taking one of these puppies home and it was uncropped. I had an arrangement to get it cropped, everything like that. And Bill come to the house and he saw it and he says, God, I don't remember my puppy looking like that. You know, a black and tan and everything, but it had a fairly longer coat you know, fluffier. And he says, I'm not sure whether what whether they come like this or not. I said, well, I'd like to find out first. So anyway, I uh, I went to a woman that run a big boarding kennel over by Paris, Gertie Mittendorf, and she, she didn't know what to do with, what kind of an answer to give me. So she recommended I take the dog down to Pat Blakey's. She's a good dog from breeder. She would know. So in the car I get, I take it down, get out of the driveway, put get out of the car, I mean in the driveway, and uh, put the puppy on the ground. And Pat looked at it, and she says, oh, dear. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. I can hear her. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> so anyway, she said, uh, let's go over, uh, look at a litter that Margie Johnson had. He just lived around the corner from her. And, and uh, just com- compare them. So anyway, I went over there and looked at uh, Oh, it is different, you know. It's different, different texture to the coat and everything. A little, probably about a quarter inch longer than what puppies were. So, anyway, I don't think he believed me to tell you the truth. So I that's why. I had, that's why I had to take him over to Margie because she was the same <laughs> you know, typical Brian. Yeah, typical <laughs> me. Show me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I ended up take, taking the puppy back to the people who bred her because eventually they found out it was sired by a German shepherd that was at the kennel where the Doberman male was. So anyway, long story short, I, that was the start of the the look. And and I eventually ended up buying another one up above Toronto and a uh, nice dog. Went to a match uh, up up at Mary Lou McDonald's place above London, uh, there was about a hundred Dobermans at this match. At the match, that Berkeley was yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, God, I got a fourth out of six. <laughs> and I thought, this is a real barn burner. We better, you know, better put some effort into this one. But anyway, uh, that was the end of the winning story. <laughs> so I ended up. Uh, Placing him with the people who bred him, and uh, I, I was serious about getting into the show end of it, you know, things like that. And uh, so that's how I met Pat. She had a litter, and well, Joey Purdy started to go and talk to me. And Joey Purdy said, yeah. "Go see Pat. She has a lovely <laughs> litter of puppies on the ground right now." So I ended up with a uh, real nice bitch. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah she was. Um... She was uh, a grand. vintage daughter. Yeah, grand slam. Yeah, yeah grand slam. The bread, uh, rat grand slam. Rat grand slam. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Really, really pretty bitch. And uh, actually, she had a really good show career, too. I did some really nice wedding with her. And then I eventually got a, a, a nice male sired by another shop line dog from Ted Burt. And uh, I ended up winning the national specially with him in 19... 19- what was this dog's name? Uh, Carolyn's Black Liberator. He was sired by Guba's younger brother. So I guess that's where Liberator came from, I guess. I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was kind of like getting all in the family by then, you know. Like, 
And, you know, it uh, just went on from there. And eventually, Pat and I got together well, probably three or four years down the road, and the rest is history. Yeah, that was, what, 1976? 76. I, I, I'm sure I, I met you guys, but I actually met Brian before that. I think I met Brian in 74, 75, because my parents had a Doberman from Roger Mail, and Brian showed her for us. And it was probably around 75 that Brian showed her for us. So, velvet. yeah, velvet, yes. <laughs> yeah. I remember. <laughs> yep, I remember, I remember I had shown her, my father had shown her, and then Brian took her. And I'm think I, I remember turning to my dad and said, "That's not our dog," because <laughs> her neck grew and she had more angle and she had all this shape to her. <laughs> you know, he was relatively new to handling at that time. You know, but there was always, I mean, I've got some pictures of him that are awful, uh, really, really, really bad. But you know, you, you take the pictures and you realize where you have to improve and you develop. Um, for sure. Style. And um, I always knew he was going to be a good handler. You know, it was it was it just seemed to be in his genes for some strange reason. You know, mm. <clears throat> but um, well, even today in our class, I, I do a handling class every Tuesday, and Pat and Brian come once in a while, and they'll bring a young dog over, and Brian will set it up for me, like holy Jesus. <laughs> 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 Tony Manco always used to say that. Um, he thought because Brian gets so much neck out of the dogs that he always said that we used to hook our dogs into ceiling fans. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to give a, a lot of credit to this, some of the other handlers, like Shirley DeBoer. Oh, yeah, Shirley. Scott yeah, McNair. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but Shirley was really your mentor because yeah, she, she was. She, yeah, she used to ride him something oh, yeah. chronic. You know, you realize why I. You today, you were messing with the front when he was looking at the rear, you know, all that kind of thing. But hey, it's like it. Scratch him far enough yeah. and all this stuff. And so yeah. I filed everything away and uh, <laughs> just kind of learned how to do all this myself, you yeah, know. And then, you somebody and then you started beating Shirley. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well, tell me how you first met Shirley. But before you do, I'm just going to ex- Shirley DeBoer was a very prominent handler in the 60s and 70s in Canada. She was top dog all breed two years in a row with her boxer. And she was sort of considered our Jane Forsyth at the time. Yeah, exactly. So, really. Tell me how you met Shirley. Description. How we met Shirley? Yeah. Just, just around the, the show. Shows, you know? Around the show. I know we, John and I had this uh, bit. She was um, from the um, Blackberry Brandy breeding. <clears throat> she was really nice. But she had a very narrow front, beautiful, um, nice front, beautiful outline, nice head, dark eyes, the whole thing. And uh, John wanted to get rid of her. So we get rid, I mean, place her. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we showed no, that's it to right. Shirley. Get rid of her, that's what John would say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we showed it to Shirley. And she, you know how she would go around and she'd look at the dog and look at the dog and she'd say, why would you want to get rid of this bitch? And John said, well, both legs come out of the same hole, you know, narrowing front. She said, my God, she said, some people would breed 10 years for a bitch like that. You're crazy. You know, so we kept her. And she became an obedience trial champion. Actually, John showed her when when she was in obedience, when she was nine years, nine or ten years old, when she got her utility degree, you know, she, you know, with nice longevity with her. Well, yeah. yeah. But that's how we met Shirley. And you probably same way. Yeah, she just took it on herself. Uh, when I come out of the ring after losing to her to just uh, tell me what I did wrong and did this and did that and da 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 and uh, Kind of took me under her wing, really, because yeah, she, really she thought I had good potential. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, I thank her for that. Yeah. I've always said she was a good mentor. Well, she was always like that. I remember I showed when I showed my parents door when I was about ten, and uh, I forget what judge it was—a relatively new judge. And I went in the ring with my dog, and I was, I was very small. I was diminutive. So the judge got kind of nervous, this little kid showing a dog, and they didn't. she didn't want me to show the dog. And Shirley came right in and I could see her talking to her that she'd be, yeah, he'd be just fine and let him alone. He could show the dog. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was blunt right to the yeah. point, I'll tell you. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> 
remember <laughs> when she told you because yeah. she was just kind of uh, quite bossy about it, you know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so. But I, I, I sure do thank her and I always yeah. Uh, yeah. Co- comment on even now, what even Shirley now. did. No, for sure, for sure. Same as me with Joey. Joey Purdy, got the line. You know, I regard her as my mentor too. You know, we'd sit together at shows and she would, we'd talk about some of the dogs and, you know, she, she, uh, she had a, you always often unique ways of talking, of showing you what was wrong, you know, like no. oh, one apple ass, you know. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> apple ass. Well, thanks in, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, no, for sure. I, I was I was so young. I still remember Joey. I remember going to her kennel one time and and being afraid of her geese. <laughs> so, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're scary. I I hate flappers like that. You know? Oh, they were they were guard geese. I wasn't afraid of the Dobermans. I was afraid of the geese. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. 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 Vintage Euro, top tw- American top 20 winner. Yeah. Uh, troll, uh, Troll Arabesque, Shoffeline's Troll Arabesque. We've read to him a couple of times, got some nice dogs from that. And what was the dog after Vintage Year? Um, well, she she had, uh, she had. Um, was it a special edition or was it? Well, she had Tugger. Dog, and dog then was, she had, um, oh, what was that one's name? Uh, it's troll goober and mm, that's all awesome. now terrible um <laughs> but okay troll was troll our best goober was what was goober's name sorry what was goober's uh registered name vintage year vintage year but then there wasn't there one right after that his son or his a whole series she had him. another one yeah. called Limited edition. Yes. Limited edition. That's it. Um, yeah. what, what, was, what was that one? God, okay. Boomer or something like that. Boomer? She had Tugger and Boomer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, All these Boomer. different names. She, yeah. she, she was here prominent in her day, that's for she sure. A really nice dog, you know. And you, back in the day, we you have maybe 15, 20 open dogs in a class. You could pick her breeding out know, just. Just like nothing, you know, still yeah. like sore thumbs, you know. Yeah. And her bitch is the same way. So, but you know, half the people in the country had shop line in their in their breeding line. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, well, they had, you know, it was a, it was a good idea back then for sure. Mm-hmm. So, so when you guys got together, what was your first litter together? Our first litter, uh, we um, we bred um, the Gooba daughter to Vince von Avery. That's you right. know, champion Vince Von Avery. I um, thought he won the national specialty too. Yeah, he won the national specialty under Peggy Adamson, that, no. that, a red dog. Um, it's funny, you know, I showed my outrigger dog to Peggy at that at that particular specialty, it was my first specialty. And he was a be- outrigger, was beautiful, gorgeous headpiece, um, outline the whole bit, but he was very narrow in front. And we did our down and back, and he came back and he did that perfect, you know, like this. <laughs> I looked at her. We both smiled, and she said, "Drives you crazy, doesn't it?" Needless to say, I didn't win. <laughs> yeah. But that was fun, and that's where Vince Von Avery won the the, the national and the yeah. baby. Yeah. And we got some nice puppies from that. We got um, it was a Brigantine who was puppy of the year that year. Just sold to a, a young couple who knew nothing about showing, but you know did well with him. And then um, the um, Brass and Sash, Brian won the the DPCA sweeps with with her under Don Simmons, Don Simmons. and she was yeah. the um, foundation bitch for Sterling Kennels. You know John and Gail Shepherd. So, so your first, your one of your first litters produced Springsteen. Is that right? You just said no, no, no. Oh. Brigantine. Oh, oh, I thought it, I thought you said Springsteen. Okay, so I remember Springsteen. <laughs> His call name was Buggles. 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 <laughs> yeah. When did Cola come onto the scene? Oh, Cola. Well, um, Brian's li- Black Liberated dog that won the national. Um, 
Laralyn had a this nice Hugelhoff pitch spread by Diane Hilliard, Hugelhoff wishing ring. And we didn't know Laralyn and Dave, Dave that much. We'd seen them around at the shows, but they loved um, Luger, Brian's dog. So uh, the first breeding, their first breeding was to, um, to Luger. And they got a really nice litter. And we looked at the litter when they were little, and there was this little pink collared bitch that we liked. But we thought they were going to keep it, so we didn't even, you know, make any, you know, effort to, you know, to sure. have it. Anyway, he's got the story about the sanction match. Yeah, there was a sanction <laughs> match over at Rockton, and uh, we used to do a lot of them with good practice for the dogs and everything like that. But well, there weren't as many shows back then, so sorry. There weren't as many shows back then, so we all did the sanction matches in the winter. So, right, you know, yeah, they were, they'd last the whole day. There were so oh, many. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we went to there, went went to that match, and uh, Marilyn and Dave were there, and she was she had this really nice, probably about five, six month old black bitch on a string hanging on her, and uh, like she, she looked like she didn't know where she was going. But anyway, I, I went over approach her. I said, boy, this is a nice pet. Uh, what are you going to do with her? She said, oh, she's going to a pet home next week. I just took the leash from her and I said, unsell her. We'll work something out. <laughs> and, uh, of course you did. <laughs> sometimes you had to be blunt. <laughs> Yeah. No, it just turned out to be really, really nice, nice breeding, you know. And no, and she did a lot of winning. Lot I, of winning. I remember when I was a kid watching Cola for sure. I remember I, I showed her to Bill Taylor when she was about probably about maybe three, and uh, there was a, a a bitch around the area that was doing a lot of winning, and uh, I beat her that day with it. And uh, some and Bill Taylor said to me, he says, some days you get a really nice surprise, he says. <laughs> so, you yeah. Know. yeah, she was an American Canadian Bermudan championship. Yeah. She won her first three in the state when she was 11 months old. Wow. And what was her full name? Uh, Amber uh, Marks, Accolade for Pip. Accolade, accolade for Pip, yeah. Uh, from Dave McKay. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, that goes back a ways too. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> like like every other dog, you know, she could have had maybe a better neck set. Now we know, sure. um, maybe a little smoother in the shoulder, but she was compact. She moved. She was, you know, everything you would want and in showy. a show dog. Beautiful, just so showy. You know, we took it. We went to Edmonds in in what was that? Nineteen. I don't know. She was 10 anyway, <clears throat> or almost 10. And Brian showed her in veterans. And uh, she went opposite that day to um, Springsteen. Oh, Springsteen. He's a bit later. We'll touch on him afterwards. <laughs> what a, a Mary White yeah. dog. And oh, then, Max. And that was under Susie Francis, that's opposite. And afterwards, she had said um, if Brian had been able to stay on stay on Cola, she probably would have won it, won the whole wow. thing. The next day, she went opposite under Jane K to Mary White's um, Max Factor, you know. Um, but I'm a little bit ahead of myself there. <laughs> oh. But she was, and she was also the first bitch, first bitch to win the DTCC National. National, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be Cambridge up there yeah. On, yeah. on the highway, the whole whole Holiday Inn where they used to have a lot of specials. Yeah, they had a lot of nationals there. Yeah. 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 She was also um she was she was she also came from the breeding a breeding to uh, Belmar Tattoo. She was bred to Belmar Tattoo Hell High, high Water. American and, dog. Yeah, and she was um a, a bitch from that became uh the foundation bitch for Lynn White Whitcam. So, and she, I think she was Dam of the Year that year with seven champions with them, Lynn. <laughs> Yeah. 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 You, you forget about a lot of stuff that you get talking about it, you know. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. So, okay, I, I'm, the dog I remember after Cola would have been Mercedes. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we bred. Um, we had a we had a bitch from um, Irish cream <clears throat> that went to live with um, Carla, our friend Carla Kowalczuk in Thunder Bay. She was a really nice bitch. Really you know, nice. really good bitch. And um, Carla, we got her back um, to breed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well. we were going to breed, we were interested in breeding to one of Lana Snyderman's red dogs, um, Wheels. And we were at a show. Was that in, at the Met? That's Metropolitan the Met. Kennel yeah. Club? No. And we saw this black dog that really took our eye. He was in the classes, I think. He was one of their dogs also, uh, Applejack. And he was a litter mate. So right away we said, oh, no, this would be a better match. I think you I know. like this black dog better, yeah. I said. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Beautiful front on the dog. Just a really, really nice uh, nice dog that we felt would, would match her quite nicely. And it so happened we had the bitch at the same show that uh, Applejack was at. And... Uh, Irene Bittemann yeah, happened Bittemann to be up from Texas, yeah. and yeah. Uh, Cherie DeBoer, who was handling <laughs> a lot for Atlanta then, and uh, they saw her, and they come down, and they said, holy smoke, this would be a beautiful breed, you know. Yeah. So, anyway, we did it, and uh, yeah. they produced Liberator's Mercedes, and... Yeah. And, um, and uh, it was our sport car, that a Maserati. Um, Lamborghini. Lamborghini. And... Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo. Mm-hmm. I remember Alfa Romeo, but, but Mercedes sticks in my head though. So well, you see, the the boys took a back seat to her. Yeah, she was so she was so glamorous and dramatic at the same time. So she was she was good from puppy on, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. From day one. Yeah. Actually, she was top working dog in the country in six months of showing, and uh, first bits to ever win the working group like that. And uh, she was she was just. She was barn burner. Jump right out at you. And uh, yeah. uh, first, uh, I think her first ten shows I had her out, I put six best on her, and that was that was tough, tough competition oh, for sure. Really tough. But Lamborghini, uh, I think, finished in. He finished in three shows, three shows in, in Indiana or no, Anap- in Indiana, Kentucky, 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 Kentucky right. Louisville. Yeah, right. Paula Hall showed him that weekend. Yeah, three five point three, majors. Three majors. Paula Hall. <laughs> um, you know, he used to draw a couple hundred Dobermans. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Louisville back then. Yeah. yeah. Alfa Romeo won uh, the DPCC mm-hmm. for the regional um, under Marge Cox, handled by Joe Love. <laughs> we, we took a few dogs with us, so we had to scramble to get people to, to help us and do that. So it worked out really well. And yeah, for sure. First show in. Um, uh, in the state was in Pennsylvania, and it was to, he showed to Robert Slade, and um, she won she won the breed uh, over kryptonite as a puppy. Yeah, he was six months yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> by Linda Kruka, but you know, and our uh, Lamborghini went reserved when his dog to him, and and we didn't mind a bit. This puppy was beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. He caught our eye then, didn't he? Yeah. Um, but anyway, he won the breed under Robert Slay. Um, it was a horrible Big rainy group. day, really horrible oh, rainy day. Nasty. And um, people were starting to leave, you know, the group was coming on. And um, I was trying to keep an eye on the group, but, you know, I was waiting for the puppy group. Mm. No puppy group in the state. So I had to go running for him. And he was there helping push people out of the mud. So, yeah. uh, so he grabbed the dog, grabbed, <laughs> grabbed the leash, went to the ring, and what did he say? Robert Slay says, hmm, you go to the back of the line and don't be late for my groups. Don't said, ever be late. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, started making some placements. And he come down to me at the end. He says, put her up the front. Five point major out of a two point win, you know. So yeah, that was something. Yeah. 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 You know, really yeah, she, interesting. She a lot of the really well. yeah. lot of the carry on we went through. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That'd be quite the day, though. Wow. It really yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. It, it was exciting. You know. Yeah. It was. Yeah. But Wish you could turn back the clock a little bit. You know, <laughs> but 
Just crack the odometer and just spin it back. (laughs) But, you know, we we were were getting to the point where um, we we believe a lot in line breeding. Yeah. We had line bred, um, but we were getting boxed in. And so we were running with the idea of taking our line bred bitches, taking them out cross, and then like the Mercedes and Cola daughters, and then bringing them, taking them out, out cross, and then bringing them back in. And that worked quite well. We worked bred, really well for yeah, us, you know. We bred, um, what was it? Um, ooh, what was it? That's horrible. Yeah, we bred to, um, yeah, we bred the Cola daughter. To no Mercedes to the cola to a cola sun from hell or high water, and from that came Springsteen, Liberator Springsteen, Matinee Liberator's Idol. Matinee Idol, and um, you know several other champions. And they were best in show dogs. Yeah. Actually, Springsteen was number ten all breeds, and uh, oh, I remember Springsteen. Yeah. Oh, we just went out on the weekends and home in our own bed every night. So, but yeah. uh, he, he was a lovely dog. Winner's dog at the American National in uh, San Diego. No, Colorado. Colorado Springs. Spring, Colorado Springs. Yeah. And that was exciting. Oh, that was really uh, exciting. Yeah, we had actually three dogs in for winners that that day. Well, it seemed all through yeah. my my career. You guys kind of always want winner's dog or winner's bitch, the American National. It's I know it didn't happen, but that's what it seemed like to me. Yeah, no, so. it's pretty well. Yeah, that that was really an exciting win though with uh, Springsteen in Colorado Springs. Uh, there, there was always a lot of uh, Australian and you know people from New Zealand that had dogs, and we kind of knew them from just the nationals, you know, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when, when I took Springsteen around for, for Winter's Dog, he he, he was a, a, a real mover. He, he could just fly, you know. I could hardly keep up with him. He was so good. But uh, the people were standing on chairs and cheering for him. Really was. It, it, sound, it just so sounded like uh, there was going to be a riot or something, you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, what I remember about him is he demanded attention in the ring he demanded it and because he'd, he'd almost stomp around like you better look at me you know yeah exactly. you know that that reminds yeah. me when ray carlisle was doing that especially and uh i took the dog down and back and i brought him back up to ray and uh he looked at ray and ray looked back at him and he just stared at ray like that you know and uh he talking to Ray after, and he says, I've just sealed it right there. He, he said, it was just a, a, a natural dog with some attitude, you know. Oh, my God, yeah. What was his call name? Meats. Meats. <laughs> it was uh, Dimitri, actually, Dimitri. Yeah, Dimitri, I remember that now, yeah. He named him Dimitri, but then he got shot for the meat, yeah. 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 happened? My Irish setter ended up beef, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, he, he was the only black dog in the litter. And she'd already promised him to this girl, a black male, lived in BC. Yeah, Crystal, she was only 16 at the time. So and Pat held up to her word. Yeah. And that's, that's where he went. We didn't really want it to happen, but, you know, I so couldn't things go back. Worked out really right. to show him and actually, her. yeah, actually, that was a blessing in disguise because, I mean, she took him everywhere. Oh, I think oh yeah. Well, I can't even remember what year that was, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. So, I think something like that. Yeah. What was it? We were in Edmonton showing at the National out there, and uh, I saw this dog. And I said, Crystal, I said, You think I could show him? She says, Sure. I don't know. I won one, two specialties yeah, with him. Best, best you know, and, and, and we then brought Crystal, him home. Yeah, Crystal went to work for Mary Rogers in California. So um, it, the solution was for me to come to work for a year. Yeah, it worked out perfectly. It worked out really well. Yeah, it really did. You know. yeah. yeah. Sorry to see him go home, though, I'll tell you. Oh, he was like yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, Springsteen's brother, Matinee Idol, was a really nice red dog, but he took it much of a backseat. A very standard dog. Um, he he, a best in show. 
couple of best in yeah, Jordan. Yeah, Jay Forsythe put him up and thought he was a What dude. was his name again? Liberator's Matinee Idol. Matinee Idol. Yeah, I remember that. What was his call name? Nice red dog. And he, he well, he was a sire of two uh, Canadian specialty uh, national winners. You know, he was a nice dog. Yeah. And uh, anyway, Mercy's next breeding, Mercedes' next breeding was to Kryptonite, Kafka. And this was the dog that we had seen as a, as a youngster and we knew had, had such promise, but we never dreamt that he would reach the heights that, that he eventually yeah. did with George, uh, <clears throat> with George Murray. A woman named Donna Anthony Johnson. owned the dog at the time. And she sent him to Michigan to be handled by George Murray. And uh, we bred to him before George even got him in the ring. Because uh, I, I drove over there, we only got one breeding, four puppies. So, but they were all they were all good ones. They were really good ones. All four of them finished in the states. And, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. The the one was um, Eagle, Liberator Sundowner. Yeah, I remember that dog. Top Doberman and Sire of the Year ninety three or something. And then uh, High Society was a red bitch that was in that litter, and she was beautiful. And we were going to keep her. But C. Ringstrom kept calling and calling and calling. She had this client. <laughs> yeah, you know, all the whole story. So anyway, we ended up letting her go. She was she was uh, Rest High Society. And she did really well. <sighs> I don't know whether she was, I don't know whether she was top Doberman or whatever. I, you know, uh, Lee Kenyon you know, I don't know how much. How much winning she actually did, but it seemed like Lee, she Lee Kenyon, did really well. Lee, Lee Kenyon took her to a, a, a national in San Diego. Oh, right. Yeah. And uh, she yeah. won especially from the classes. Yeah. Andy Linton started showing her, then, but he had a class, but he had specials. So he got, who was it? Corky Broom. Corky Broom. Corky yeah. Corky Broom. <laughs> Good choice. That's the winner. Yeah. And she, the won, bus up. she won the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was. I mean, that had to be a real high point for for Lee. Oh, for sure. I got to uh, Wisconsin. I met Lee there, where there the show uh, cricket, and uh, I finished her with two two fives there on the first two days, and then I bumped her in the specials. We went to Waukesha, and I won the specialty. So I said this. Start the car. We're going home. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all thrilled to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, Jim, 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 Jim Cavallaro. Jim Cavallaro. Yeah. yeah. You remember him? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, uh, she was she was the dam of uh, Hot Fire's August Dream, who was owned by Hugh Middleditch. Oh, wow. He showed her a lot and did really well. Actually, I think she was number Number one Doberman. I know. I know. I know there were some shows that he couldn't show, he couldn't make or something near the end of the year, and he wanted to keep her in the ranking. So he sent her down here, and uh, I showed her a bit. And Lucy, yeah. Lucy, just she was a real show dog. She oh, she was boy, beautiful. I'll tell you. Yeah, beautiful. Make yeah. you look like a handler, yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And High Society was um, granddam of um, Deb Anderson's um, drama. Oh, okay. Remaker, you know. Um, Who we also bred to. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, indirectly. Yeah. 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 But that yeah. was nice. And then we took Sundowner Eagle to, to Liberty's Black Rain, who was from Cola and Achilles of Indicator. And from that, we got um, Chi Chi, Achilles Sunrise. Yeah. Tequila Sunrise. And she was yeah, in two years in a row. So yeah, she was number six and seven all breeds in ninety four and ninety five. Yeah. And was there someone you uh, obviously back in the days, Shirley and Joey? But did, was there someone when you had an idea about a breeding? Did you ever talk with them about it, like Shirley or Joey? Um, well, Joey was always a good good input um, uh, earlier, you know. But mm-hmm. then I I. By now, she's not showing so much. By, by the, you know, the late, by the 90s, yeah. she's not showing that much. In fact, I think by that time, she had sort of um, semi-retired from breeding. Oh, okay. Did so, you stay in contact with her afterwards? Sorry? 
Could you stay in contact with Joey? Well, they, they moved to Florida, Florida. Well, and uh, yeah. we just kind of lost touch. Lost touch, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Ron passed away a few years back. I don't know. Caroline Irvine is still um, in touch with Joey, or was still in touch with Joey. Um, I don't know whether she still splits her time between Florida and uh, and Canada. I don't know. So, I, I just wasn't sure if there was someone you you did still reach out to. I know you have you have each other, so that was probably enough. So, <laughs> as far as you no, know, as far as being concerned, just for ideas, you know, mostly out and we argue. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean? Do you argue about because? Some dogs are Ra, some dogs are Liberator. Do you argue which dogs are which? No, it just depends on on which which name we we choose. Oh, okay. You know, but um, mm. but yeah, I mean, we talk to all kinds of people, and I mean, I love going to shows when um, where we can sit together, or used to be able to sit together and talk dogs and talk about their their virtues and their faults. Yeah, Nobody without does. offending somebody, you know. Now you offend everybody. So, I think one of my best discussions was with uh, Judy Taylor and Sandy Bingley, mm-hmm. who was show in um, Kitchener. I think it doesn't matter. But we got into a really nice conversation. You know, we talked about confirmation. We talked about health issues. Uh, you know, all of these things. And I used to love to do that. That was so interesting. It, oh, for sure. You can do that. Much anymore. Everybody you? learns. When they were benched, you oh, know, yeah. you're, you're there for a week almost, but you know, you get to know people and yeah. talk dogs. Yeah. And so what, All right, what, sorry to interrupt. Go on, go on from there. Oh, okay. Where are we? Oh, well, we're as far as Chi Chi now, Tequila Sunrise. Yeah. yeah she was a, a, she got an award of merit under Peggy Adamson at the mm, that was in Oregon, too, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, Portland National, DPCA National. I don't remember the year. Um, and then I think a year or two days, two years later, her brother, um, Liberated El Dorado, Peg, um, he was winner's dog at the DPCA National. That was under Sheila Donardo. Sheila Donardo. Um, and then another letter made. Liberated Vera Cruz, she was a champion, but we didn't show her that much. She was she she did well in the Welping Box. She was Dam of the Year in 1997 and 1999. So, and then what else did we do? Harlow, <laughs> you can't forget about Harlow. Oh, we're getting to Harlow. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about the young red dog? The national he shows the national. Which one was that? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I'm forgetting <laughs> the <laughs> So many winners, you're forgetting them all. <laughs> oh, oh, how could we forget Calvin Klein? Calvin Klein. Oh, Calvin Klein, yeah. <laughs> that was, we hadn't been to a national in quite some time, but we went to New Jersey and we showed uh, Calvin, Calvin uh, Klein. So. And, uh, he was with his dog under Mike Billings. I remember that. I remember that. Then he went down to Ohio. We did two specialties about probably maybe that was September. This was November now. Yeah. And he won two, two more five point majors of specialties. I finished him in three shows and that's all he was ever in. Yeah. So uh, boy, that's going to be a memory, you know. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> up here too. Yeah, I, yeah. I think he was top government, wasn't he? I can't remember. I can't, yeah. remember. I can't remember. He was really nice. Yeah. I don't know. If you had a crystal ball, you know, you'd be a lot further ahead in your life. But I we, think. It's, it, you know, you don't remember a lot of these things until little things tweak, you know. Oh, for sure. For sure. But, um, but you've but, had a, you've had so many consistent winners. It's it's I'm sure it's hard to keep. Keep them in order. So, but we, you, you talk about Harlow. Well, um, she was from Chi Chi's sister. Yeah, before you talk about Harlow, tell everybody who tell her Harlow's name and what color Harlow was. <laughs> well, um, Chi Chi's sister was bred to this Deerfield Toil and Trouble, who carried 
dilution. We didn't know that. Um, and that produced a uh, liver as Metallica. And um, she was the best in Trilbridge, too. So we had looked at um, Legends of Extravaganza V Deco. We had always liked the dog. Beautiful dog. Beautiful he won the product. top 20. He won, won uh, everything out in the States. He was so nice. He was ahead of himself. Yeah. Look wise, you know, yeah. a beautiful dog, a lot of front and angles, and just a just a super dog. Yeah, so we bred to him twice. So I cut the story off there. So yeah, well, you you did you? Oh, he drove to Nebraska to, oh, to breed. Fourteen hours straight it's to breed him because the uh, progesterone set, test says, yeah, "Can been. you breed her tomorrow?" <laughs> I don't, holy Lord, here we go. So yeah, yeah. the. The end and away we went. Yeah. So we got a couple of breedings and nice litter of puppies. So yeah, but I'll, I'll never forget. You know, the puppies started to arrive, and she was the first one to arrive. And we saw these little feet, so these little pink feet, and they're coming in the sack. I said, "What the hell is oh this?" Oh my God! Look at this. We have a fawn. <laughs> <laughs> it was our first dilute litter. Rainbow yeah. litter. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the first fawn, and you know. Um, she was quite something, but you know, we have pictures of her when she was like, well, three or four months old. Never let never let anybody see him. <laughs> no, I don't ugly. think anyone's seen him. We called her the Russian boat, boat woman. Russian <laughs> boat woman. She had all the parts, but everything was all kind of twisted around Robust, here and there. And top line like this. This heavy didn't look bone, like the breed. You know, lots just, of bones. Nobody you know, would have kept her. I'm sure nobody would have kept her. And, and just, then, then she started to blossom. Just she? like the butterfly, you know. Yeah, no kidding. Really? I, I remember the first time we took her out um, to show her. We didn't show her until she was later, uh, a little older. But she finished what in three shows, three yeah. or four shows. First show, she showed her to Ramon Podesta. Oh yeah, Ramon Podesta. And he he gave her best of winners. They almost gave her the breed over me. But uh, Pat said when she would get the picture, she said, "I didn't I didn't know whether you would like the the color of her or not." He says, dear, he says, she, she could be green, <laughs> and I would put her up. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was her full name? What was Harlow's full name? British Blonde Ambition. Yeah. Yeah, she ended yeah. up number 10 all breeds in Canada, and I challenge anybody with a fawn to, yeah. to do that, you yeah. know, so. Oh, she was beautiful. Yeah, fawn to win a best in show yeah. in Canada, yeah. Everything she won was a record because I don't think anybody even attempted the color before, you know. Yeah. yeah. There was only one, one judge said, uh, didn't put her up, gave a reserve and said, you know, she's almost an Isabella. <laughs> Old timer, you know. Yeah. yeah. I finished her, uh, I finished her in Lansing, Michigan uh, under Bill Shelton. She was in the uh, open bitch class and I won that and I won the uh, Winner's bitch, and then they went back in for uh, for the breed, and God, there must have been 15, 16 black specials in there, and she, here she is, standing down at the end, all in all her glory, you know. So anyway, I won the breed from the classes with her finisher. But her first American <laughs> was the National in San Diego, and oh, uh, God, that was under, yeah. under Jim Riley. Yeah. Um, I mean, the applause for her there was was really incredible. You know, she went she went win this bitch, and um, at the end, Norm Kenny was judging the breed, breed. and all of the dogs there that the he kept bunch in, were black. they were all black, and then was she the only colored Doberman in there, you know, and she went best of winners. Yeah. You know? And then a couple of days later, she went reserve winners bitch under George Rood. Um, so that that was that was really nice. Yeah. And I think George, See, doesn't this seem like every national you guys are always winning something? <laughs> yeah, I've <laughs> been doing so good lately, but you know, well, we haven't, been, we haven't know. been to any American, no, shows. no. exactly. You know, yeah. but um, then we did the repeat breeding of Harlow that produced Harlow, and from that came uh, legend Liberace yeah. Valentino, and he was number one working in number 10 all breed. And, uh, no, he was number six all breed. No. <laughs> Too many winners. Right here. Oh. <laughs> it says so right here. <laughs> but 
Our marriage got to be real. (laughs) I saw it on the internet. It must be real. (laughs) And then uh, Harlow's sister, Garbo, um, we, we, um, Maria Riley asked if she could, well, the litter for us. She wanted to breed us to her dog, uh, Chase, Caliath and Dream Chamber. So we said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So and we would do a, a co-breeding. And um, anyway, she she did the breeding and um, she she placed most of the puppies. But there was one red bitch that came to us. And that was um, Brooke, Liberated Chasing Rainbow. And she was... Um, I don't know what she was. I think she was what well, she was number one Doberman. I think she was, she was a star. in the in the top working ones anyway. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she was she was something. We got a little, so you know. have you ever you, you started back in together around seventy six, and now we're in twenty twenty three. Have you ever counted how many top winners you've had or pr- produced? Well, not no, not producers. I wish we had. I'm a horrible record keeper, but I think at last count we had 48 best in show winners. That I that's didn't, incredible. That was, uh, you know, that that's different dogs, not yeah, no, was, no, not one yeah. with ten, and the other that's one. Inc- that's that's totally incredible. You guys, I just got goosebumps. That's thing you've produced 48 individual best in show winners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. she was score of the game last night. <laughs> you know, they were mostly all handled by us. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. I've never. That's, I've, it, that's totally incredible, guys. I just, it's, it's amazing. I can't imagine there's any other in Canada. There's any other breeders that have done that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. As I said, I'm, I'm an awful record keeper. <laughs> so, can I ask you a question before we carry on? If someone came to you and said they wanted to start breeding dogs, even if it wasn't Dobermans, what advice would you give them? Oh, no question. Get the best bit you can get your hands on. Save you 20 years. Yeah. Really. Really. Yeah. Just pack yeah. into all the wasted time you've done and just start with a good yeah. one. Yeah. I mean, I look at what 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 we started with, me, what I started with, which was Grass Stormy Rebel. I mean, she was fantastic obedience dog, but she looked more like a little rock, like a rock miler. Sure. Sturdy body, and she had one ear up and one ear down. And, you know, and it was hard to know really whether to free to her, to use her or not. But she had so many other things to offer that we, you know, we went ahead with it and it worked. Yeah. You know, Good but temperament. It, it doesn't always, you know. Good but temperament. Of course not. Like you said, you can save yourself. Few years. I, well, well, you guys are proof in the pudding because you, you've yeah, produced. And I would say, I'll get a line bread bitch. Yeah. But now, what if they came to you and then what if they didn't really know? Say they're brand new and they didn't really know what a good one was. Then, then what direction would you point them? Well, same, same thing. I mean, get get the best one you can and and find a breeder that you can work with and that you can trust and. You know, hope that hope that they follow through. Yeah. You know, we've we've done that a couple of times, and um, some people have have done really well from from our from our breeding. You know, and that's lovely to see. I really like that when when people do well and can kind of carry on. But the thing is that once you have something, you have to breed it right. That's yeah. that, that, that's the formula right now. You know, that's the formula. And you, you know. could, and you, you could have the best dog in the world, confirmation wise, but if you don't have temperament, you got nothing. Right. Really. Right. Yeah. Not dependable, or yeah. yeah. You know, they'll always let you down somewhere. You know, when it's a when it's a, a crunch, if you're showing them, you know, if they just something just doesn't hit them right, game over. Yeah. You want you need yeah. stability for sure. Can you, can I can you ask can you answer me this? Why didn't you two ever decide to what? judge? <laughs> like, no, no, no. Why? Well, I I had I had most of my my qualifications. Oh God, what? Twenty five years ago, years I guess. Ago. Um, but he was handling, and to me, it wasn't right. 
for me yeah. to do that. Um, you know, so I didn't do the extra step, but I mean, he should be judging. Both no. of you should be judging. We're too old now. We're yeah. not too old. My gosh. Come on. <laughs> You're in my class running around the ring with a 120 pound Doberman. <laughs> oh, she's so good. You know that. <laughs> I know. Tell me you're too old. Oh, not many. Not, not many. No, the young one kind of run me into the Now, park. what would happen if the Doberman National Club came to you and said, I want one of you to judge the national specialty as a breeder? What would you do? Would you take it? I yeah. go. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, I'd we, like yeah, we go for it. Mm-hmm. We've been nominated to judge the DPCA Futurity a couple of times, but because we always were attending and showing, again, we didn't we didn't feel it was right. We could do know? that. And there was there's restrictions the too. Specialty, there's restrictions right? um, about what you can do, and if we're going there for a whole week and whatever. I know, but if you're judging the breed, you're just going to go there and judge the, the breed judging, or not, dog bitches in your intersex. Mm-hmm. Well, then, of course, you're not showing. But I think 48 individual best in show winners, I think you should be out there judging your breed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too bad they wouldn't automatically let us do that. <laughs> well, national specialties can national specialties can hire you as a, as a breeder to judge the national specialties, a parent club specialty. Oh, yeah, no, they can, they can, uh, yeah, they can do, uh, do some finagling that they can get a, a old-time breeder or, or a handler or something yeah. like that. You know, I think, and, yeah, I think that came up at DPCA a couple of years ago. And Gabe Osbrook was one of the people who were really um, pushing for it, if you want to say that. And uh, so many people were in favor, but I don't know what happened. It never did materialize. You know, well, I think I think I think you both need to be out there judging your breed. So well, we've done the top twenty. He's just the top I've twenty. The, yeah, I've done the top top twenty in the states, and I ring steered the top twenty. So I ring steered it, but I'm still waiting for the invitation. Ah. <laughs> well, maybe someone listening here can listen mm. up and say these two should be judging. <laughs> really old. You know, no, I think we have to have to go as a team because we're teamwork. <laughs> I'll slip in on it, you know, but same vice versa, you know. Oh, exactly. Like I, I see you guys at the shows and you're still out showing dogs. If you're still out showing dogs, you could come out and judge once in a while too. So that would be, it would be nice. Yeah. 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 So, do we have any future litters planned? Like, are we, are we, anything exciting coming up? We haven't. We haven't touched on the South American dog. Oh well, let's hear that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have a lot to touch on. That's the thing. Well, yeah, we um, we'd always like to look at the South American dogs and felt that they had a lot to offer. A lot of people said, "Oh no, the temperament on those dogs." Isn't and they great. don't do a lot of health yeah. testing That's and whatever. Hard. But but anyway, we bred to. Um, um, probably the black shadow, and uh, that's a nice dog. I always him. liked that dog. He was a beautiful he's, dog. It's beautiful. He was owned by a good friend of mine too, Ron Babix. And uh, yeah, actually, I drove down to Atlanta and bred to him and got some nice puppies. Yeah, we bred our chasing rainbows to him, mm-hmm. and from that came um, Hugo Boss. Uh, I bred a Hugo Boss. That's yeah. And. Um, Cheryl Mahaffey's Charo liberates obsession. Yeah, I think she was the best in show winner too. You know? And then, um, I, as luck would have it, he gets a phone call that um, the a owner, in Florida that we know yeah. had the uh, Navajo to Black Shadow down that area and good friends of the guy who owned the dog in India. Anyway, uh, they wanted to put a Canadian championship on him, so I agreed. They sent him up here. Hell, we had him for eight months, you know. And he, you know, I didn't want to send him home, he was so lovely. And you know, I'll never forget we went to get him off the plane. And we, we get him off, we get him outside. He comes out of the crate, and it was like, Oh my god, look at this dog! You know, and he came out just like. Well, here I am. He'd probably been in on the plane, probably. I don't, yeah. 
probably close to a day. Had he come yeah. from Malaysia at that point, or had he come from? No, had he come from? Yeah, he came from Malaysia. I don't know. Anyway, I can't remember. anyway, he he took my breath away. Just beautiful. And lovely then, temperament, lovely outline on the dog. Yeah, had some faults, but yeah, they all do. They all do. That dog came you know. to live in this house with cats. With other dogs, just fit right in, like you know, like he's been here all these like no temperament problems at all. I mean, you want to talk about being maligned, you know? We bred to him once, and wish we would have done it a couple times, but uh, and from that we got Geronimo, Liberated Apache War Bonnet, Liberated Apache Firebird, um, and all best in show, especially when there's five other bitches (laughs) finished. But um, Geronimo was a uh, reserve winner's dog at the American, the host club, American. These National. are dogs I've forgotten. Now you remind. I remember Geronimo. <laughs> Anya, the Apache Firebird, multi best in show, multi specialty. Uh, Geronimo, multi best in show, multi specialty. Sire of the year, all of those things, you know, that make it worthwhile. And this is just just me saying, talking. South American dogs, they got kind of knocked for some time from different people, but you have to have that look in your breeding program. Even if it's just a you touch. Really you really know? do, yeah. because they have that special look. Yeah. And you, you can tell right off the bat. Oh, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a look of the eagle, and it's a, it's a dramatic look. You know? yeah, yeah, they're beautiful dogs. Yeah. But we have... Um, we have a, a, a bitch, the British Guilty Pleasure. She... He was, she's a dam of a 12 American champion. She went to live with um, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Mullins. We did co breeding with Jocelyn. And her Bravo was sired by one of our dogs. And uh, I think he was top Doberman. And he, was then, top, he was top dog in, uh, in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. so we bred back into that bunch again. And <laughs> Away we go. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's fair to say you've had a worldwide impact on the breed. So I don't know. I don't know about worldwide, but uh, certainly Australia and New Zealand, uh, the Australian New Zealanders have, have used our dog. Seems to be very successful. Yeah. And it's flattering that they would even consider us. You know what I mean? Given, yeah. at the, given the problems they have getting the semen to them, you know. And pounding on a frozen breeding, or, yeah, you know, yeah, like it's a, yeah. always a chance on that. Yeah, so. yeah. But, but they, they've had top, top uh, Dobermans over there in that country from with our dogs in behind them. Yeah. yeah. So they've used the semen right, you know. Yeah. And then. Okay. So before we wrap this up, I want, I don't know if you guys have an answer for me or not. Any idea how many champions you've, You've produced. Um, you take that. And that's that's I'd it. say I'd say over four hundred. Uh, probably fifty in the states. No, I don't think it's quite that many in the states. Oh, I think it is. No, I, uh, no, no. <laughs> so, anyway, four hundred in Canada. Forty-eight, maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Forty-eight this week, I was told. So four hundred plus champions, forty-eight individual best in show winners. It's fair to say that you had a huge impact on the Doberman in this modern era, from when you guys started to now. Um, what's what does the future hold for Wrath Liberator? What was that? Sorry. What does the future hold for Wrath Liberator? Um. Mm. So it's hard to say. Well, we're we're both getting past it, you know. Um, I mean, I I love having puppies. Puppies are my bag, if you want to yeah. call them. I um, feel like showing puppies too. Yeah, you know, training them and. But I mean, we it's come to the point where I mean, Brian doesn't handle. I'm not a handler. I can get by, but I mean, there's no way that I could, or even want to campaign a dog. I couldn't. And I don't yeah. really want to. Um, but you, you bring dogs to my class. I know you bring them just to get them out. And all of a sudden, like, I remember that one time, I can't even remember what the black dog's name was, the one before Bogey. 
and he was such a beautiful make and shape. I wanted people to see him, but you hardly showed him. Wilson. Wilson. That was Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah, I've shown him a little bit. I showed no, him. I know. You showed him a little bit. And he, did he win the best in show? Uh, Wilson, no. No, Wilson. no, I thought he did. He shows he did. Oh, at, at, at the all shows. Yeah. 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 ABI. Yeah. At the ABI. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's nice to show. He's easy for me. Um, he was such a beautiful make and shape of dog. You know, the people. I remember being in the states telling somebody about this dog in my class that it's 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 incredible. So he was really a nice. Dog. And he has he has one major in the state, but we haven't been back there for well, COVID that got in the way. Um, yeah. We haven't been over there probably five or six years. He uh, he won an open black class at the Post Club uh, National in the states. So, oh, beautiful dog, right? You know, you, you just, I, I see a lot of dogs in my handling class, and uh, when one sticks out, it sticks out. And so, yeah, he's, really, he's, he's, he's my cup of tea, but yeah. you know. Well, I, I'm going to have to wrap it up, guys. But it's been a true honor to talk to you guys. I, 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 I've known you my entire life, and I didn't know some of the numbers. I knew there was a lot of them, but 48 individual best in show winners. I, I don't, I don't know if I've ever heard of that before. So, no, we've we've been lucky. right place at the right time. We've been lucky. Luck doesn't last that long. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be more than luck, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. We both enjoy this. We both enjoy, we love our Dobermans. We both enjoy what we put into them. Oh, yeah. it, it, that's totally evident. It, you, you had to have enjoyed it to, to have this longevity and and this many consistent winners. It's, yeah. yeah. My hat's off to you guys. It's been a lot of good times, a lot of heartaches, too, you know. So, yeah, that's the way it goes. It was the territory. Yeah. yeah. But thanks, guys. I won't keep you any longer. And uh, I I really appreciate you doing this for us. We appreciate it, too, Will. Thanks for thinking thanks of us. Thanks a million for thinking of us, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. Take care. Thanks, guys. I knew that would be great. I'm still dumbfounded by the sheer numbers you have achieved in your career. Thank you again. I can't be more honored. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. You want to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me at dogshowtips at gmail.com. Or you can go now to our new website, willalexanders.dogshowtips.com. Um, and don't forget about the podcast every week. Wayne Kavanaugh and myself, the Dog Show Drive. Take care, guys. Till next time. <laughs>